now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey everyone, it's Dr. Dan Ritchie, and I am joined uh, by John East, the owner, creator, mastermind behind uh, Power Guide Training. John, can you still hear me okay? Yes. Hey, awesome. Dan. So you've got the, the controls now. Um, if you want to share your screen, uh, feel free, uh, hit the big play button. Uh, John is a longtime person in athletics. Uh, he's been an athletic director. He's worked with high school athletes, um, worked with a, a wide range of individuals, and has developed a tool called the Power Guide, which he's going to introduce to us today, um, which we believe at FAI is going to really dramatically change um, just so many mobility issues and back pain issues, lower body strength issues, uh, and on and on. So, John, are you uh, able to share your screen with us? I'm trying to. <laughs> Let's see. So, under sharing, there's a big play button that says show your screen. Yep. Here, here we go. I hit it. Is it coming up? Uh, not yet. My screen is up. Hmm. So on, on the controls, John, there's a, the sharing button, there's a big uh, play button where it says show your screen or share your screen. On the sharing button. Yep. There's a pause. Yeah, we want the big, we want you to hit the big play button. That's what I'm hitting. All right, I think it's coming in now. There we go. Yep, got it. Okay. Now. We're off. All right. Now. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Okay, what I want to do is uh, go ahead and just uh, dive into this, and I uh, appreciate uh, Dan giving me the opportunity and, and certainly the uh, Functional Aging Institute. So let's jump into this. The, uh, the Power Guide training system, what is it? Uh, what I envisioned uh, about six years ago was a simple training aid that we could help teach uh, better alignment of the uh, glutes and hams and also the uh, rector spinae group to give us uh, better mobility. Uh, there's also reduction in back pain. And then we've actually started seeing some cognitive improvement in people that we work with. Um, a lot of this came out of uh, actually uh, training elite athletes and how do we develop glute ham development, uh, speed, et cetera, and uh, using eccentric work. And what I want to do is uh, uh, I always say I've, I've got a lot of coaching experience, teaching experience, uh, training of athletes, and I, I dive into it. So uh, what we're going to do is, is jump into this first video. And this group is about lifetime mobility. And I like to start with this because it really gives us an idea of, it's not jumping up now. Let's go. Come on. What is going on? Hmm. Try this again. Here we go. All right. It's coming. I don't know why we're delaying. I apologize for that. Let's see. Come on. Hmm. All right. I'm going to go back to it again. And I'm not sure why it's not coming up. Let's try the next one. 
Okay. Huh. Everything was rolling. John, try it in um, try it in slideshow and go to full screen, and maybe you'll be able to click on the links and they'll open. So if you go up to slideshow at the top of your PowerPoint. Uh, slideshow. Where am I going? Let's see. I apologize. So at the top of your PowerPoint where it says slideshow. I see new slide slideshow. Got it. Okay. Sorry. Why am I not responding? Do you have any of these? Um, yeah, slideshow, and then you just want to go um, presentation go. mode. It, it, yeah, it's. Sorry about this. Do you have any of these uh, open in YouTube in a browser? Because you could, you can jump yeah, to I that can. because you're sharing your screen. So. Oh, what is going on? Now your PowerPoint's not responding, so your computer's having trouble. It is. Oh, I apologize, everybody. Wow. See if I can get it back up. Hmm. Everything was running fine. Do you have any of these links? I see you've got Internet Explorer and Google Chrome running. Do you have any of these links up in those pages? Because you could just jump straight to the YouTube channel for us. Yeah, I'm going to try to do that. Computer is struggling for some reason. All right, I'm going to try this again. Know why we're going so slow? Well, I'm sorry, everybody. Sorry, Dan. Let's see. Let's try day one. All of these just opened right up before. It's trying. Let me check something real quick. Well, I don't know what's happened. Still there? <laughs> yep, I'm still there. All right. I'm sorry, everybody. I apologize. I don't know what is going on. It's not, uh, I've got the internet signals fine. And uh, got all these YouTubes waiting. Can you close out of your PowerPoint and just hop over to YouTube? Yeah, that, yeah let me see if I can do that trying to close out all this wow <sighs> i wonder if it's the It's trying to pull up a playlist. Come on, go. I'm gonna try to knock out all of these. These are all the ones that try to open. Let's see if we can get it. 
I apologize, I don't know what's. Why it won't go out. It just froze up. Um, come on. Here we go. All right. Let me try this again. I don't know. Hmm. It's really frustrating. Everything opened fine during the warm up. Oh boy. All right. I think I got it, John. I, um, I'm going to grab the controls back from you. I've got your presentation. Um, Celia shared it with me, so hang on just a second. Okay, yeah, I don't know why this is not coming up. All right, can you see my screen, John? I'm gonna no, because I've got to get out of mine. Uh, okay, yes, okay. Um Okay, so let's resume here, John. Um, I think you were okay. trying. I think you were trying to show the lifetime mobility. Um, yes. With with Dean, correct? Um, yes. Wh which one of these were you wanting to show first? The first training session, the second. Uh, first one. Just go to the first. The first one. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think I've got that up already, which I think is this one right here. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, right. We'll just we'll go with that. That's actually the second one, but it's fine. Okay. Okay. All right, what we've, what we've created is a training aid that helps keep knees behind toes. And because most people, when they stand, will push forward with their knees. And so what we're doing is working on both concentric, but especially eccentric work, going down, negative work. And so what we have is first time training for this gentleman who was uh, very frail when I met him and he was heading into a wheelchair. The reason for the chair in front of it it's just for safety. If he were to feel a little bit unstable, he could just put a hand out and catch himself. So what he's doing is. Uh -oh. so what do you want me to sh What do you want me to show next? That just go to the next one. Just go down the list. Well, did we do the second one just now? Uh, go, go to second one. Yeah, second training. Go to second training. That's fine. Mm -hmm. All right, now this is just, this is the second session only two days later. And what you'll see is that he is able to stand taller and he's actually starting to get some use of the glutes and hams in a different way. It's, it's interesting to me how fast things can start to happen when we train this way. And so again, the, the, why the yellow training aid? It, it, it absolutely helps to give, uh, especially these older adults, uh, the cue needed to stay in the right alignment so what we do is we do five sets of five, three days a week. And what begins to happen is after, after three to somewhere in the three to five week range, we begin to see it imprinting on the brain. And the, uh, and what the result is we get to the six week mark and you'll see that he's able to stand, doesn't need to use his arms. And we've completely changed someone who, uh, was frail in the beginning. And, and Dan, if you can go back to the, where it says uh, first, the first one. And I want to repeat it several times. Uh, day one, I'm sorry, day one. What you're going to see, this was how I met this gentleman. And what you're going to see, he was frail heading into a wheelchair. And if you can repeat that, there's a, a, a spot that we call the strength gap. It's right before he flops into the chair. 
there's going to be a spot where there's a gap and he plops down into the chair. That's what we're one of the areas of focus that we're doing. We're training that spot. So in terms of mobility, uh, we're giving this individual some glute ham development and lower back development. And yes, go ahead with that how, slide. How far apart are these from the okay. first time to here? How many weeks? we? This is, this is six weeks training, uh, three days a week, five sets of five. And what I always recommend is um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and then always have two days off in terms of training like this. And then once, once you get to this point, it's really maintaining, or this gentleman actually who lives in a retirement home is much more engaged in their fitness classes. Early on, he didn't, he didn't want to do them because he, he, he didn't, number one, it was very difficult. Number two, he didn't feel confident and he was a bit embarrassed, quite frankly. Uh, let's go ahead to the next one. Um, this is a lady that uh, was diagnosed with dementia and this is her first training session. And she'll, she's a little confused, not sure what to do. And she's trying to come out of the chair and it's, it's difficult. And she'll get to a point where it's also difficult for her to stand up. She uses a walker and uh, shuffles along. That's uh, how we met her. So this is training session one. And, uh, and, and what happens is that, uh, especially if we're working with dementia or Alzheimer's, um, there's, there's confusion. Sometimes we have to help them to put their hands back on the chair. But what we're doing here is you see her going down slowly that's concentric work, negative work. One of the things that we know in training is that uh, we get stronger from both the, the concentric and the eccentric, but we actually get more from the eccentric and the eccentric will, uh, it'll transfer over to concentric. So this is the second day. And what's interesting is she has recall. So we're two days later with this lady who has dementia. And when we brought the device into view, she had recall and started to realize that uh, what she was supposed to do. And what's interesting, without the device there, she has, she has no idea. So this is only the second training session. She's standing taller. She's learning to use the glutes and the hands and the uh, muscles in her back. And uh, as she comes down, we're, we're not, you take it just session by session. You don't try to teach everything at once. It's confusing, but uh, to, to, to people, uh, especially with dementia. But what's interesting is it begins to build. There's a, there's a, uh, uh, I think there's a compounding that happens. It's a, it's a cognitive improvement that begins to take place. And so what we'll see here is this next one, uh, this lady, uh, this is, uh, this is 10 days later and she comes right up out of the chair. And she's much more, and for the caretaker that works with this lady, the caretaker is so much, she's so excited because she's so much easier to work with. Uh, this lady went from shuffling to after three weeks on her own, all of a sudden changes her gait and begins to open up her gait. And a walk for this lady with her caretaker might have been in the past to maybe go out to the driveway of, of where she lives, her house, and look at the sky and come back to where after three weeks of training, she actually could walk around the block and uh, becoming uh, much more engaged, much more positive. Uh, and the caretaker uh, was just ecstatic. Uh, caretaker said she's been doing this for, for quite some time, working with people with dementia. And she'd never seen this before. So you can see there's a much stronger. And then this is this next slide, uh, the videos, we begin to teach what we call tapping. And she taps and comes back up. And so what happens is we teach level one, which is using the arms. Level two, the arms are out. And then we begin to teach tapping. And what tapping is, is eventually we'd like to see instead of five sets of five, we'd love to get to a point where it might be five, 10, 15, 20, and five. And the reason uh, I like to use, I like to use the model of three warm-ups, a work, and a warm down. Always finish with a warm down. So that's why we, the ultimate goal is to get uh, with someone like this to uh, a five, 10, 15, 20, and five. And what we're doing is uh, we're, we're pushing uh, 
a, a, a lot of blood through the brain because we're incorporating the largest muscles in the body, the glutes and the hams. And so with this lady, uh, we started to see some cognitive improvement. Again, became much more engaged, uh, definitely uh, 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 was more familiar with her, her uh, the, the, the people, et cetera. So I'm not saying we're, we're erasing dementia. Uh, Ryan Glatt, who uh, I've gotten to know through the Functional Aging Institute, uh, has helped uh, me to understand more about shrinkage of the brain and how we perhaps can, with circulation and adding uh, uh, blood flow, that perhaps we can uh, see some cognitive improvement. And uh, I believe that's what we're seeing. Uh, let's go ahead to the next panel, if you can. And uh, okay, this lady is, she's living independently in her home. And this is actually her second training session. The first one was kind of blurry and the dog was barking and everything. But this lady was, when I met her, uh, frail, living in her house, moved around the house with a walker or hanging on to the furniture. If she wanted to try to, to cook a meal, maybe she could stand for maybe a minute, but she'd have to sit on a stool. Uh, one of the things that's interesting with this lady, she's, she was 88 when I met her. She had had double knee replacement and single hip replacement, and uh, she had gained weight and becoming more and more frail. And uh, one of the things she loved to do, she shared with me, was to vacuum her house. And so um, this is, uh, so this is actually training session number two. And uh, you can see the, the eccentric work. She comes up, we come up to a two count and we go down to a three count. So we come down a little slower than the uh, speed that we go up. And uh, what we're also doing is teaching the body to absorb uh, eccentric work. Um, the uh, is, is a big part of this. So we're, we're teaching the muscles and the legs. Uh, what I believe also is that this, this approach uh, could very well help us in, in terms of uh, fall prevention and even more so because of teaching absorption of the body. So this was training session two becoming more confident and then as we moved to the next uh, two weeks later on her own she uh, she decided you know I believe I can do this without having to push off the chair and I'm not sure if you can tell but but I can just because of the experience I've had with this I'm beginning to see uh, stronger core muscles uh, one of the things that I uh, have absolutely seen uh, with the training of uh, with older adults is this type of squatting because of making sure the knees stay behind the toes and learning to balance absolutely builds the core in a positive way. And we see positive weight loss. What is positive weight loss? It's losing, it's losing weight, but getting stronger. A lot of people lose weight and they, they, it, they can become frail. And uh, let's go on to the next, next one, please. And this is how she trains now. She trains at home. She does uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, and 5. She trains at her table because uh, she, she lives a lot, a lot of the time. She's independent. Um, and she, uh, uh, one of the things I love about this is she, she went from uh, having uh, back problems to where her back pain is gone. And then the other thing is we uh, actually uh, taught her how to take some little steps in, the, in a squatted position and uh, taught her how to, uh, how to vacuum her house. So she vacuumed her, vacuums her house twice a week without stopping, and it's part of her exercise routine to vacuum the house. Let's see if we have sound on this. That's all right. What I'll share with you is that she, uh, this lady uh, who uh, had back pain and arthritic, uh, arthritis uh, is just sharing in this that her arthritis absolutely feels better and her back pain is, is virtually gone. And a lot of this we think is just because of, again, circulation because we're engaging the glutes and the hams. And the last one, she was talking about how she went from uh, being able to only, she could vacuum part of a room for about a minute and then have to sit for maybe 10 minutes and then try it again. But now she vacuums twice a week. And so uh, she is uh, being able to remain in her home. 
and, uh, and is also uh, much more interested in doing more work. I've, I've actually done some other things with her as well in terms of uh, working with her arms and other things. Uh, let's go to the next one, please. Um, okay, so what we're talking about is improving mobility. So if we can engage the glutes and the hands and the lower back, we, we get people into a, a better position uh, in terms of posture and we're improving mobility. Uh, the reducing risk of ACL injury or failure. ACL injury, as we know, is most often a uh, non-contact directional change, whether it's vertical or horizontal. Uh, vertical meaning someone jumping or stepping down from a chair, uh, I mean, uh, from a stair. And if the knee is out in front of the toe, there tends to be a shearing. Uh, same thing happens in athletics. It's a change of direction, the knee's in front of the toe. Well, what we're doing is when we get to the nine or 10 week mark of this in training, it really begins to set in the brain. I don't have to think it any, about it anymore. And when I go to jump or if I step down, my knee stays behind my toe. If I go to change directions as an athlete, my knee stays behind my toe. Uh, I actually become uh, bigger, stronger, and faster as an athlete. Uh, the reduction and elimination of lower back pain. The, the, the key to this, I had a slide that I was going to add to it today. Uh, this has to do with the sacrospinalis muscle. It's part of the erector spinae. Again, it's the sacrospinalis, and some people refer to it as the spinalis. It's a muscle that runs the length of the back from top to bottom, and it anchors in the iliac crest area. The key to the, to the reduction and elimination in back pain is that to stimulate the connective tissue on the bottom of the sacrospinalis, one has to get into a position where the thighs are close to parallel to the ground and the knees are behind the toes. Why do I know this? 30 years ago in graduate school, I had a professor that made a statement. He said, you're gonna have trouble with back pain. You're gonna have trouble with your athletes and whoever you're training with back pain. If you wanna resolve back pain, most of the time, it's in lower back pain, it's the lower connective tissue of the sacrospinalis, and you have to get to a position, as I described. Uh, and so older adults can't just jump into a parallel position. They'll fall backwards. They'll fall. But we can teach them over time and through eccentric work, begin to stimulate that connective tissue, and the back pain goes away. Um, and when I say go away, uh, I've been helping people for 30 years. It, it, it didn't hit me till about 15 years ago that people, at least people that I had talked to, weren't really familiar with uh, the sacrospinalis. And I'm talking about uh, orthopedic surgeons. And, and, uh, and so I was uh, blessed to, to learn about this. Um, so we're having uh, significant success with the reduction of back pain. And, and again, most often it's elimination. And people uh, uh, that uh, have been, uh, let's say they've had a double knee replacement and starting to struggle with posture. And then for, uh, as, as atrophy sets in in the lower back and they begin to, to hunch over and things get worse, uh, when you go back to mobility, that first gentleman that we showed that was walking to the chair and sitting down, he can stand up straight now and his back pain is gone. Um, weight loss. Uh, we see we want positive weight loss. And again, what that means is someone is becoming stronger. They're not losing weight because they're losing muscle. Uh, actually, what we see is a, a, we, we tend to see a weight loss. Uh, with someone who is uh, carrying extra weight when they train this way because it absolutely stimulates the core. And the other thing that happens is we see people change their gait. Uh, I have a neighbor that uh, we worked with that really struggled to walk, could barely walk. Her husband would have to hold her arm. She had had uh, double knee surgery. She had had um, uh, in was receiving three injections a year for her back, uh, for the pain. Uh, I met with her, three weeks of power guide training, and she walks easily anywhere, and back pain is gone. And she actually just traveled to uh, Florida with her 
daughters and walked on the beach, no back pain every night. And uh, this lady has been through a lot. So, uh, and she too is uh, showing uh, positive weight loss. Uh, strengthening of the core muscles, we've talked about that. Um, getting in this position and holding that position really strengthens the core muscles. Uh, flexibility. When you train this way and uh, force the knees behind the toes and down to a parallel position, we actually work on the stretch reflex mechanism in the hamstring muscles. Uh, if you're not familiar with the stretch reflex, the simplest way to explain it is if I go to throw a baseball, my tricep fires and the muscle that helps keep the bones from hitting in the elbow is the bicep. It fires. It's a stretch reflex mechanism. And so what happens is uh, lots of times the loss of flexibility is because the hamstring muscles are just so tight. And what we see with this is we see a tremendous improvement in flexibility. Uh, muscular endurance. Uh, this one is pretty straightforward in the sense that we've now recruited the largest muscles in the body, the glutes and the hams, in a way that they become much more engaged and helping instead of instead of walking predominantly with our quads and our calves and 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 those muscles, we engage the glutes and the hams, and we have tremendous uh, a tremendous improvement in muscular endurance. So we see that the older adult uh, can can be much more engaged. What I love about all of this and for the, the fitness professionals that are working with older adults, there's so many frail adults that I've met who thought it was over and the word hope is what they've, they had lost. And the ones that I've, that, that I, I, I enjoy helping everyone, but when you can turn someone who is frail, they're heading into a wheelchair and all of a sudden, they're no longer heading into that wheelchair, and it only takes a matter of a few weeks. They become so much more engaged. And the other thing I've seen is they want more. They want, what can I do? Where can I go? What can I, you know, who, who, can, uh, who can I work with? Uh, so they're, they're, they're looking for that uh, fitness professional that understands how to work with them in the, in the particulars. Um, let's go ahead and go to the next one, please, Dan. Thank you. So, um, you know, I'm when I talk about this in terms of the I've had people that that in the in the medical world that recognize the potential for what we have. We have we have the capability. Again, the whole thing here was to come up with a, a simple training aid that I'd be able to meet with someone and say, hey, if you train this way here, all, all you have to do three days a week, five sets of five. Here's a training guide to help you. Um, and why the importance of the training guide? I've trained elite athletes, some of them getting some hefty paychecks to play the game and, uh, and several different sports. And what I have found is when I've worked with them in the weight room, uh, whether they were high school or at the collegiate age or even at the professional age, I always had, uh, if, if I didn't have something around like a yardstick or a box or something, I had to reinforce it because their knees started to move in front of their toes. So what I'm sharing with you is that one of the best kept secrets of the elite speed world is knee, knees behind toes and shoulders behind knees and eccentric work. Why am I saying all this? Because my goal was to come up with something that was inexpensive. And so what we've what we've done is to set up uh, on our website that uh, purchasing a unit for $59 with the uh, instruction, instructions level one and level two, and then also a test we've created. Uh, what is, that's what comes with the units, the instructions. And then what we do also is we sell a five pack for uh, $199, $199. The intent there is to uh, for the fitness professional to uh, they could uh, send one home, uh, sell it back to them. Uh, that that $199 puts it, I believe it's at $39. So there's a $20 plus on the suggested price. The fitness professional could make a little money. That's the idea. Um, uh, let's go ahead to the next slide. Um, here's my information, uh, info at powerguidetraining.com. The other thing I will say to you, uh, uh, don't ever hesitate to call me. That's my cell number on this on the screen. And uh, I live in Knoxville, Tennessee. If you're in this area, I'd love to meet you. Um, and 
that's uh, that's pretty much it. There's a there's a great deal more. At some point, um, Dan Dan and I worked on some videos, and uh, one of the things I had hoped to put up was uh, some discussion about the 30 second uh, chair sit to stand test and the power guide uh, functional sit to stand test. The 30 second sit to stand uh, does not include. Um, it does include it does not include eccentric work because we're, since we're going against the clock, uh, someone goes up and down as fast as they can, and so if someone is training to that test, they don't do eccentric work, and the body doesn't necessarily learn how to absorb. So we believe that the uh, the power guide functional uh, sit to stand test would be a great addition. I'm not saying don't do the 30 second stand; it's a great tool. But we believe that uh, uh, it, at some point you, you'll, you'll see, we'll share it with you, uh, the sit to stand uh, functional, the power guide functional sit to stand test. And uh, we think that could be a tremendous uh, asset to you. Uh, I actually, the, the last thing I'll say before we take questions, um, whether I'm working with an elite athlete for the first time, uh, that collegiate football player that wants to try to get to the next level, uh, or I'm working with an older adult, or I'm working with a five-year-old, the first thing I do, uh, I give them my test. It doesn't matter who they are, because that's going to tell me where they are and how the brain is working with the neuromuscular connection of the glutes and the hams. And so whether I'm training a five-year-old, a 95-year-old, or an elite athlete, it, it all begins with eccentric squat work. That's where it all starts, because if 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 I if they cannot do that properly, uh, I don't move to other things until I can do that. And that's why I've had success with uh, uh, training speed, et cetera. Uh, the other thing I'm able to share with you is that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be able to share. I've had confirmation. I can share this. that We're working with uh, we're working with a Navy SEAL team with this protocol. And uh, the number one reason for Navy SEALs to leave uh, early uh, in terms of early retirement is lower back pain. And the SEAL team that we've been training, uh, it's going into 11 weeks now. Uh, they are active duty. They're deployed. But their back pain is going away. And we have full confirmation that they're all fully aggressively training again. And either back pain is is uh, significantly reduced or eliminated. And uh so very, very happy to be able to share that with you. Uh, questions? All right, let's open it up for questions. John, first of all, uh, you didn't give us your website, so I'm guessing it's powerguidetraining.com? Yes, powerguidetraining.com. Okay, and then I have another web page of yours here um, where we put some stuff up on Functional Aging Institute. It's discover.functionalaginginstitute.com slash power-guide. Uh, where people can get a couple more of your videos and uh, get some training tips from you and that sort of thing. But if they want to buy the, if they want to buy the uh, unit, it's uh, it's just powerguidetraining.com. And if they want to email you today, info at powerguidetraining.com. Any questions for John um, on the Power Guide and the Power Guide training system? Go ahead and type those in, and I will uh, pepper those at John here as we have. About 15 minutes left, um, and obviously John was generous enough to give you his direct line, so if you want to call him uh, direct with questions, you can do that as well. If you're listening on the recording, um, shoot him an email. Probably don't call him at 2 in the morning if that's when you're listening to this recording. Um, and John, you're going to be at the Functional Aging Summit uh, this Friday and Saturday uh, showing off the power guide. Is that right? Planning to, yes. Awesome, awesome. Um, all right. Any questions from anyone? You must have covered it really thoroughly because no questions are <laughs> no questions are coming in. It is pretty straightforward uh, how it works and how to use it. Uh, if people want to go find those videos, John, is that on YouTube under John East? Um, where where would they find those? No, if they will send uh, an email to me, I will uh, I'll send them the full set. Okay. All right. That would be the best thing. So just email John if you want uh, more of those sample videos. Uh, 
First question is not really a question. Uh, Danita Green says, thank you, great talk. Um, so thanks, Danita. <laughs> thank you, sorry for the technical <laughs> issues. <laughs> Um, I'm glad I had your PowerPoint handy, so I was able to, to, to load it up. I think just yeah. it's possible. I've had some people in the past, John, the, the go-to webinar takes a fair amount of juice, so it's possible um, your computer just didn't like running multiple things plus go-to webinar. So Donna, so Donna has a question for you. Um, how do you think this translates to getting up off the floor? Uh, great question. I, I believe that uh, it, does, uh, it does help with that in the sense that um, uh, some great things out there about uh, what to do once you're down on the floor, moving over to uh, something that you can get a hand on. Uh, and I think what it does is it, it allows you to put your uh, body into a position, your glutes and hams are stronger because you're fully engaging them and the knee behind the toe that once you get to a position where you can get an arm onto something, it's much easier to get up. And uh, I hope to actually do some videos on that pretty soon because we're, we're, uh, we're working on uh, uh, what you would do now that you can use those muscles. But so we've recommended people, uh, you know, go, go to the, get, get yourself over to the stairs or get yourself over to a sofa or a chair but it is absolutely much easier to get up if you've been training this way. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, it's only logical to me if we substantially change your lower body strength, your ability to get up from the floor is going to improve as well. Um, though a lot of the individuals you showed are probably not getting down on the floor, right? I mean, if they're having, if they're having so right. much trouble mobility-wise, they're thinking about a wheelchair. Um, they're probably not getting up and down from the floor. So this is a, yes. a huge, um, huge one of the, right direction. Yeah, one of the things you mentioned, a uh, wheelchair, we're, we're having a tremendous success as well, working with people who transfer from a wheelchair. If they're capable of transferring from a wheelchair on their own uh, to a chair or to a bed, uh, we are, uh, we're able to train them uh, using the eccentric work. Uh, we, uh, uh, continue to tell them to stay with the wheelchair, but that transfer becomes uh, much easier. Um, the other thing that we are having uh, tremendous success with, uh, lower limb amputees uh, that are able to get into the, the right position are engaging their glutes and hams, and uh, we, we, we absolutely are helping uh, people. I have a gentleman that uh, uh, lost uh, part of uh, one of his legs below the knee and uh, they were very concerned, he and his wife, that they were going to be moving out of their house. He was losing mobility. Uh, met with him at his home, trained him, uh, just a, a less than a one hour session. And uh, within, uh, within three weeks, uh, he let me know that he just goes right up the stairs and comes right down the stairs. And so uh, he's able to, to move uh, much easier. And uh, actually, they just came back from a trip. He was walking all over the place. And uh, so if, if you're someone who works with amputees and understand K levels, uh, K0 to K4, uh, we're seeing, uh, absolutely believe we can change a K1 to a K2. Those are, those are the levels of uh, the prosthetic limbs that one is able to use. And it's based on mobility. So. Um, the other thing is, if you go to the website on the about page, there's a there's a lady that uh, you'll see me working with her, and she has Alzheimer's. She lives in a retirement home. Uh, it's uh, actually her son-in-law that uh, that uh, is is the lower limb amputee I was referring to, and uh, this uh, this lady, if you scroll down. Uh, living in the retirement home, uh, just the way things work, uh, one of her grandsons is a former Navy SEAL. He's the one that realized, wow, you're helping my uncle, you're helping my, wait a minute, this helps back pain? And he set up the whole thing about getting uh, one of the units in the protocol for tactical training that I have out to California to the SEAL team. But anyway, this lady, uh, if it can, Dan, can you hit the play button? Sure. On that. 
okay, this is what I meant where she's going to struggle with it. She has Alzheimer's, been diagnosed, and she's doing a pretty good job here, but her, she's, she's learning. And it took quite a few tries to get her to remember to just keep her hands on the chair. They kept sliding down the chair. But what happened was, if we go ahead to the next video, and, uh, and, and what I was doing in the first one, I was, one of her daughters was in the room, and I was teaching her daughter how to train her. So she's, she's watching, and the former SEAL was in the room. He's watching. And then if we go down to the next slide, this is five weeks, and she is at a level two, because, again, level two is without the arms. And she's moved up to sets of uh, 10. She does 5, 10, 10, 10, 5. And I think now she's even up into the 15s. And all of a sudden, this lady is remembering where her room is and where her, uh, where she, uh, uh, who's helping her with dinner and, and that sort of thing. So uh, it's, uh, anyway, it's, it's quite encouraging what we're seeing. Okay. Great. Um, we've only got a couple minutes left, um, so if you have questions, um, B. Spencer's got a question for you. First of all, he says, thank you, John, for your time. How long have you been using this training? How many people have you had permanent success with this? And also asking, do you instruct them to contract their gluteus maximus once they stand? I'm sorry, say it again. So uh, how long have you been using this training? Uh, how many people have you had permanent success with? And are you instructing them to contract their gluteus maximus once they stand? Um, we've had, uh, oh, we're in the well over 50 that we've trained that we're documenting. Um, and then I work with people in their homes. Uh, I work uh, with people at a, at a, uh, uh, a retirement home, they put in a power guide training station. And then we also are um, working with uh, individual trainers who are training people. And then um, in terms of the engagement of the glute ham uh, or the, the uh, gluteus maximus, uh, yes, we tell them to engage it at the top, if that answers the question. Yeah, which, of course, is probably an interesting thing when you're working with someone with cognitive challenges. But uh, um, I don't see any other questions coming in, John. Um, so I'm going to put up your uh, contact info slide here just to wrap up. So especially for people watching the recording, um, if they want to reach out to you with a direct question, if they have um, follow-up info at powerguidetraining.com. Uh, best place to, to reach you. Uh, B, B says, thanks for the answer uh, on that. Um, so, John, thanks again for your time. Thanks for bringing thanks, the Power, Power Guide to Functional Age Institute and look forward to uh, seeing you at the summit here this weekend and uh, seeing you try this thing out on a, a whole bunch of trainers. Okay, great. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, have a great day, everyone.